Okay, it's quarter after, so I want to get started. Welcome, everyone. This this is the CAD for 3D printing workshop. Uh, today, we're going to uh, go over what is CAD, how can I use it to model something, and specifically, once I've modeled that thing, what do I need to know to translate that for 3D printing? So CAD is Computer Aided Design. Uh, and so it's an acronym, and it, it's a, there's a lot of programs out there that can help you model things in 3D. Some of them are focused on uh, precision dimensional things, and some of them are focused on more organic things. Usually you can use programs for either. Uh, today we're going to be looking at something called Fusion 360. So Fusion 360 is a free piece of software. Uh, and you can you can download it for free. Uh, you do need to sign up for an account, but uh, you know, once you have that, you know, basically you've given your email, you can download it and use it. And it will allow you to um, take uh, you know an idea you might have, draw it and uh, make it 3D. And you'll kind of see how that process works specifically in a moment. Um, today we're gonna be uh, making this uh, tea light candle holder. Um, that you see the image of on the website. So uh, let's get into it. If you have any questions along the way, feel free to write them in the chat and either I'll be looking at them or Anne-Marie, you can feel free to uh, bring it to my attention if I miss something. we Will do, Robert. So uh, my idea here was this, this candle holder and I thought, okay, well, what I need first is some leaves, right? So I want, I want the leaves to be the candle holders. How do I... You start with a leaf. All right. So all I did was I, I googled some images of leaf outlines. Right. One of the one of the things you'll notice is that everything in Fusion 360 starts with a sketch. And so I thought, okay, well, let me find some outlines. And what I'll do is I'll take an image for reference, like this one, and then I will open it in in Fusion 360. Right. So here I have a blank workspace. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to Let's just look at it top down. And I'm going to insert an image into the workspace. So I do that by clicking on the insert button uh, from my computer. And I'm going to pick the leaf outlines that I downloaded. And I'm going to put it on the, the bottom face here. And so you can see it inserts this image. And what I, what I know from some of my pre-work is I want my leaf to be approximately 120 millimeters across. You're going to hear me talk a lot in millimeters. Uh, you can use this program in inches uh, if you're more comfortable with that. But most of the uh, the 3D modeling and printing world talks in in terms of millimeters, um, and it's you know it's something you might just have to get used to uh, if you want to you know uh, operate in that world. One of the handy things you'll want in order to do that is a tool called calipers. Um, most digital calipers that you can find. On Amazon, you're, you're talking maybe you spend seven to ten dollars for a you know, fairly cheap pair. But they'll be plenty good for what what you need to do, um, and you could, they'll have an inches or a millimeter mode. Um, so I you know I just took my calipers and I said, well, about 120 looks right. So right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out here, and I want to make this. I'll scale this image up until the and we'll start with the maple leaf. We'll tell the maple leaf is approximately 120 millimeters one side or the other, right? So see, I'm looking here. So the bottom's at 75 and the top's at 100. It's a little bit too big. Let me scale that down just a touch. All right, and so it doesn't have to be exact. We'll start with that and we'll see what happens. Uh, so for, for anybody who just joined, we are going to be modeling today uh, the on the website this uh, tea light holder. So we go back to Fusion 360 and sorry, got my spun around there. And so now I have this reference image imported. And so what I want to do is I want to create a new sketch. So this is more or less the first thing you're always going to do is you create a sketch. And from that sketch, you're going to be able to extrude the, the all the 3D modeling uh, the, after that using the very simple tools. 
So the first thing in a sketch is usually a line or a rectangle or a circle. In this case, we want to trace the outline. So I'm going to use this fit point spline tool. What it does is you just you start uh, making a number of points and it fits a line uh, into those points um, uh, such that you get the outline of the face that you want. And you don't have to be very exact. Um, you see, once I put down more points, it kind of recalculates the line each time. And it gets pretty close to what I'm tracing, uh, which is fine. First of all, each leaf is different. So just because it looks like this doesn't mean I have to draw it the same. And second of all, it's your leaf. You make it the way you want. And you can also, after you're done, uh, adjust the points. You can adjust where they are and how much of a curve they make. Um, so I'm just going to trace this fairly roughly. And we'll end up with a pretty good looking result. We get to the end here. If we cl click the last point, you'll see it completes the face and uh, whoa, we have a bunch of stuff. Uh, no worries, it's just that we've made a lot of points and each one of these points has a handle. So these green things are called. And so if I if I just click off real quick, it'll go away. But you can see this face shape that we've made. And there's some of these points, you know, maybe the line didn't go quite the way I thought. And uh, you can, let's say, here, for, the, for example, maybe this one, we want to click on this one. We're going to say, I want this, I'm going to move this handle down to make it match the line just a little closer, right? So I'm going to make it a little closer there. And now we have the leaf, right? And I think that looks pretty good. Uh, you can go ahead and, you know, get as, as exact as you like. So I'm going to finish sketch. And I'm going to turn off my reference image and just work with what we have here, right? So. Now, after you've sketched, it's it's this flat 2D thing, and you can't, you know, if you look at it from the side, there's you know nothing to see. So what we need to do next is extrude um, up the up off of the face to make something 3D. I see a couple questions about where did we get the leaf pictures? Um, you, I searched on in Google Images for leaf outlines, and I happen to like this third picture, so I, I used that. There's another um, question, Robert, while you're um, answering the question, where did you get the idea for the whole candle holder? I, I was thinking about something that I could do for this, this workshop, something simple, and I thought something fall. And um, I, frankly, I think there's, there's a pack of 200 tea lights is sitting over there on the shelf. And I thought, well, what about a candle holder? <laughs> so, um, I thought because I thought something decorative would be something that everybody could uh, uh, appreciate, right? Functional parts tend to be very specific to your needs. Um, decorative parts uh, tend to be uh, much um, more widely, you know, uh, desired. So hopefully that was something that would appeal to everybody, but be simple enough to to do in an hour. Thanks, Robert. So. In order to make this 2D into 3D, I use something called the extrusion, uh, uh, the extrude tool. And so I, I, I use the hotkeys a lot here. So I'm gonna press E to extrude, but you could also just click this button. And then I know that I wanna give my leaf some thickness. So I'm gonna say two millimeters to start, right? And so now if I, if we look from the side and you know, there's something to see, you can see we have our leaf, right? And so if all you wanted was a leaf, you're basically done, right? It, it was that simple, it took five minutes. But what we want is something to hold a little tea light, right? And so uh, prior to this, I, I went and measured a tea light, and I know that it's approximately 38 millimeters around in diameter. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to create another sketch. I'm going to start it on the face, and I want to create a circle. So I'm going to press C to create a circle. I click in the center, and then I start dragging out. When I start dragging out, you see this these numbers pop up. I can actually just type, I'm going to type 38.5 millimeters and hit enter. And so it's going to lock the circle at that, uh, that diameter. So we can see, okay, well, you know, my leaf isn't quite big enough to hold this whole circle. So I need to scale it up just a tiny bit. No problem, um, because 
So what we're going to do is I'm going to just quickly I'm going to finish sketch and ignore that for a moment. And then there, there's another tool that we're going to use, which is the scale tool. So if you go into modify scale, and if I click on the body, I want to scale up. And then there's this arrow and I can just drag it up a little bit. Right now it's a little bit bigger. Right, and so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and now it's 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 big enough to contain our circle. And 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 then if I go, and so this is my timeline down here. So you can see that these are the series of actions that I did. So I drew, I extruded, I drew a, the circle, and then I scaled the leaf. I actually want to move the scale before I drew the circle. So all I did was click and drag that over, and what that does is now the the scaling happened, and now I'm drawing the circle. So when I go back double click to edit the sketch and I move my circle around, I'm moving it relative to my scaled image, right? So I'm gonna just hit enter and now my circle is basically in the middle of that leaf. And so I'm going to, so this is gonna make the, the walls that are gonna hold our candle. Uh, when, but right now this wall has, like zero thickness, right? It's just a line. What I need to do is make it a little bit thicker. And so I can use an offset tool. Uh, I'm just gonna press O for offset, click on the circle. You see this control comes up and by default is one millimeter, but I'm gonna make it two, just a little bit thicker, right? And so now I have a two millimeter double circle and I'm going to use that now after I click finish sketch to extrude, E to extrude click in that circle and I want to extrude it up 15 millimeters, right? So the, you know, if I, I measure a T-light, this will be about two thirds of the height of the T-light. So it'll stick out just a little bit. And so now I have this circle in the middle of my leaf um, and I'm gonna go back in this extrude for just one moment. If you saw, there's this last, there's these options here whenever you're doing various operations for extrude, the last one is called operation join. What it means is, the new thing I'm extruding is going to be joined with any body it's already touching. Right, so now that I've extruded that, this whole thing is just one piece. Right, so this is one body, I select the whole thing and that, uh, and that's what it is. And this is basically the entire leaf, except I want one more thing and I want this leaf to be slightly thicker. Um, I, you know, I decided, I looked at it and I said, you know, well, this is a little bit thin, so let's just do extrude, E to extrude again, click the face of the leaf, and let's let's add another like four millimeters to it. And so now the, the candle actually sits a little bit down in the well, and the leaf is just a little bit thicker. It's six millimeters total, and that's you know roughly um, half the width of my finger for, for reference. And so now that's basically complete. Um, uh, so, Let's go ahead and I'm gonna take this body and go and move it to a new component. And you'll see why that's important later. Um, but basically Fusion 360 likes to deal in components. So if you have multiple pieces of a thing, you probably wanna make each piece its own component. Let's call that maple leaf. And if I expand that, you'll see that, excuse me, the body is now here, okay? The, um, sorry, there was a question. Robert, we have another question about um, Fusion 360. And there were, when I looked up on the Fusion 360, there were multiple options for choosing which one. Which one are you recommending that they use? Sure, I'm recommending uh, the, the free version. There, there's a, oh, you know, I don't remember the name of the license. There's there's two licenses you can look for. One is the, the free tier. Um, and one, it, there's a, also a student license. So if you're a student, they will give you a free license um, as well. And it has a few more features, but it's still completely free. I think you just have to give your school email. Um, but if you're not, and there's a completely free, free tier. Um, so look for that option. Thank you. One other question. How did he join the two pieces together? And I don't know if you're there yet. So when we made the second extrude, we, when we extrude, uh, sorry. The, the second one, we shoot it up the circle. Uh, so when you do that, there's this operation join 
and it will join any touching pieces together. So when we extrude the circle, we just leave it at the default join, and now it it makes it all one body. That's probably the most common operation that you'll do is an extrude and join. Uh, so I'm going to move on. And now that we have our leaf, we need a stand to put it on, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new component and call this new component stand. And so we'll just start in a new component this time. So I'm going to turn off our leaf for now. This little eye icons are for you can turn pieces on and off. And so we're going to go to the top. I'm going to say you know if you if you're looking at my my reference in the website I, start, I have a square base right so i'm just gonna make a rectangle i'm gonna press r to draw a rectangle and i'm gonna say what face i'm gonna select that the face i'm looking at and then i actually want to make a center rectangle which means i just like a circle i start in the middle i drag my mouse out and it it makes this rectangle and I know from, from doing this before that I think 70 millimeters by 70 millimeters square base looks pretty nice with, with the layout and the size of everything. Um, so I'm just going to type 70 in each box and you can see it gets locked there. And then I have a, a piece in the middle of the stand that's got to come up out of it, right? And since we have three leaves, it's going to have three sides. So I, there's a tool for drawing a polygon. And so in this case, I want a, a triangle. So I'm going to do the same sort of thing. I click in the center. I'm going to drag out. And then I have now I have two boxes to deal with, right? So one is the number of sides of the polygon. I'm going to say three. And one is how, what is the radius between the center and the edge of the surrounding circle that you want? So, and I've determined that 15 looks pretty good. So I'm going to use 15. And I'm going to rotate it so that the top is exactly on this green line. And I'm going to click. And now I have a triangle drawn in the middle of my rectangle. And so that's going to be the, the base of the stand. So I'm, I'm going to click Finish Sketch. I'm going to rotate around. And basically, we need to do another extrude, right? So it, it's, always, it's usually Sketch, Extrude, Sketch, Extrude. That's very, very common workflow. So in this case, I'm going to select this plan, uh, this profile, and I'm going to say five millimeters looked pretty good to me. And now I want to extrude the middle as well. But if I press E, there's nothing for me to select. Why is that? Well, by default, Fusion 360 hides sketches as soon as you've extruded out of it. Um, so, but you can turn it back on. Right, so now if I turn it back on using the little eye icon, the, the middle is there. And if I press E to extrude, I can highlight it. And we can go ahead and we're going to say, I know that I thought about 80 millimeters for that middle part looked pretty good. So I'm going to say 85. So 5 plus the middle part. Right, and now we're going to click Join, uh, Extrude, Operation Join, OK. Right, and so now it's all one piece. I'm going to turn that sketch back off so we don't need any more. So again, we're, we're one piece. Here's, our, here's the start of our stand. Now, what we need to do is create the arm that's going to come out of the stand, right? So if you're looking at it from the side, there's going to be an arm that goes from here and out, and then it's going to hold the leaf on the end of the arm. So I'm going to do that, is I'm going to create a new drawing, a new sketch on the, one of the sides of our post. And in order to help me, I'm going to draw a line down the center of the post. And I don't want that line to be like a real line that is considered um, by the software for extrusion. I kind of want it to be a construction line, which means it's there only to help me draw other lines in the same sketch. Right? So you click this button, construction, and you can see it's dotted. And you can also see I have these two symbols here, which means that it it automatically detected that I was close to the center and it um, it locks it to the center. So I know that line is straight up and down and in the center of my post. And then I wanna make a rectangle. So I'm gonna press R for rectangle and make a center based rectangle. And I'm gonna turn the construction off because I want this to be real, uh, uh, you know, real solid lines. And I want these to be 15 by 15. So it's like a square. So I'm going to type that in each of the boxes, and I'm going to click, and it's going to 
uh, place it in the drawing. One thing I want to point out is usually when you're sketching something, um, you'll see there, there will be black, sometimes lines are black, sometimes lines are blue. A black means it's fully constrained. That is, you have, so in this case, the dimension is known and the distance from something else that's locked in place is also known. Usually you wanna have all of your lines in a sketch be constrained. Um, so one of the things I wanna do is, so the reason these top two aren't is, I haven't told Fusion 360 how far does this square need to be up or down this line. I've told it it needs to be on this line. I've told it it's 15 millimeters across, but I don't really have anything telling it how far it should be. So what I'm gonna do is press D for our dimension tool and click the bottom of the rectangle and the very bottom of our post and drag out a little bit, right? And so you can see I have this, this control here. I'm gonna click. It's gonna say, how far did you want that? I want it to be five millimeters. And if I hit enter, it's gonna, you saw the whole thing shifted up because I said the bottom line has to be five millimeters. And I said, the top line has to be 15 millimeters away from the bottom. And so Fusion 360 uh, knows to how to position everything relative to everything else once you've added in some dimensions. So for example, if I went in and edited this to say four, everything shifts down, right? And so that's very useful when you wanna go back and, you know, cause you're halfway through your design and say, yeah, this didn't work. I really want this to, to be down a little lower and you can, do that and everything recalculates around it. And that's one of the best reasons to have everything um, dimensioned out uh, so that it's black because that you know then uh, it will uh, recalculate everything that, that's needed. So this is where our, our arm is gonna come out, right? But I don't want it to come straight out, right? If I just extruded, from this profile, then the arms is gonna come straight out. And that's, there's two reasons I don't want that. One is the design will look a little odd, but two, one of the considerations we need to make when 3D printing is that the printer starts from the bottom and goes to the top, right? It has to lay down plastic on something else. Otherwise it's just gonna kind of droop and it'll go all over the place. So. One of the rules uh, of, of thumb is 45 degrees is kind of a magic angle. If anything is steeper than 45 degrees, you're gonna have problems. And there, so one of the, the nice things when you're, if you're in control of designing a thing and you can design it in such a way that you never have anything steeper than 45 degrees, when you go to print it, you don't need any support material. So you save on plastic uh, and things end up looking nicer. So one of the things I wanna do here is I want this arm to come out at 45 degrees instead. So let's undo that last extrude. And how am I gonna get this face to be at 45, right? What I do is I'm gonna make a construction plane. In this case, I'm gonna make a plane at an angle because I know the angle I need is 45 degrees. So I'm gonna click on, it wants a line. I'm gonna click on the very bottom here and it says, okay, what, what angle you want it at and I want it at 45 degrees. And so what I have here then is a plane at 45 degrees but I need this square. So how do I get the square on this plane? What I'm gonna do is create a new sketch. I'm gonna select this 45 degree plane and I'm going to project this square, all the lines of this square onto my 45 degree plane. Right, so what I did is I press P to project. I click all the lines of the square and I hit okay. And if we look, I'm gonna turn to the side again, you can see all the lines of the square are now drawn as if they were on this 45 degree plane. These purple lines are projected ones. And now I'm going to make a rectangle, R for rectangle. And I'm gonna select the top corner and the bottom corner of those purple lines and, and click. And I don't really care what the dimensions are. And you can see all the lines have turned black because the lines of this projected rectangle depend on the lines of this straight up and down rectangle. 
Um, so that's a, a very useful thing when you have different planes um, in your model where things depend on each other, using the P projection tool to uh, draw those lines on your new plane and then base features off of those lines uh, gives you a lot of power. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the sketch. And now I'm gonna E to extrude out my arm. But I wanna select that inner rectangle and it's kind of stuck inside the model right now. So one of the things, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna long left click and it brings up this menu. And so basically anything under the mouse is now selectable, right? Not just the things that are on the surface. And so I'm gonna go down this second option profile and you can see it lights up and I'm gonna click there. And I, I know I want the arm to be approximately 70 millimeters. And before I hit okay, see, okay, this looks weird. Usually when I extrude, it's not red like this. Well, the reason it's red is the operation was set to cut. And it's cut because whenever you extrude through another body, if Fusion 360 says by default, that usually means you want to cut, which is often true. But in this case, I don't. I want to join. Actually, I'm sorry. In this case, I want a new body. And we'll see why later. But I want this arm to be a completely separate body from, from this, even though they'll be intersecting, which is fine. I want to treat it as a separate body for now. So I'm going to hit new body and say, OK. And I'm going to turn this sketch off. We don't need it anymore. And we're almost there. The arm now can't really hold a leaf because it's not flat. So again, I'm going to need to construct a new plane at a new plane at an angle. And I'm going to select this line, the bottom here, so that the plane will cut through this body. So I'm going to say OK to zero degrees. And I'm going to use the split body tool which takes, I'm gonna select this body, and I'm gonna select this plane, and it's gonna cut that body in half, because I don't really want the top part. So I'm gonna say, okay. And now if we open up our bodies menu, you see we have the main post, the bottom of the arm, and the top of the arm. And the top of the arm, I don't care about. So I'm gonna right click and say remove. And then I'm gonna hide my construction plane so it's not in the way. And now we're getting close, right? We have our arm, it's it's you know it's inside of the other post, but that's okay. And what we need to do is think of okay, so now we have our leaf and we have our stand, um, but we're going to want three leaves eventually, right? So how do we we can either repeat uh, the last you know six or seven steps that I did here, uh, th you know two more times around the post, or we can let Fusion do the work for us. So under this create menu, there's a pattern and a circular pattern. So I want to copy the same thing all around. So I'm going to choose circular pattern. I want, I want to copy bodies. So I'm going to select the body I want, which is this arm. I'm going to select the axis I want to rotate around. And you can see it, it lit it up. It's really uh, tight in here. Let me spin it just a little bit. You can see the blue axis, the up and down one. I'm going to select that. As soon as I select that, it says, oh, OK. Uh, so do you want three arms? Well, yes, I do. Thank you very much. Right, And so it's going to do all the work of modeling those three arms uh, without me having to redraw it uh, two more times. So I'm going to select OK. And now I have three arms for my stand. And they're all in the right positions. Well, almost. Right, because in, in if you looked at the website in my in my final product, I had you know, one arm at the bottom, one in the middle, and one at the top. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say M to move. And we're going to take uh, one of the ones we just created and move it up a little bit. So I'm going to click here to select this body. I'm going to click this top arrow. And I'm going to say, I want to move this up by uh, 30 millimeters. Right? So that one will be coming out of the middle of our stand. I'm going to do the same thing here. I want to say move, click this one, click the top arrow, and this one goes up 60 millimeters. So it comes out of the top of our stand. All right, so we have a bottle, middle, and a top arm now. Except, you know what I just thought? We have our leaves, and now we have the stand, which can hold our leaves nice and flat. But how is it going to hold it on? Uh, 
if we don't really don't want the fire to fall off just because somebody decided to come bounding through the room. That doesn't sound great, right? So how do we want the stand to actually hold the leaf? Well, we could glue it. Um, you know, using some super glue works really well in plastic. Okay, glue works, but is there a better way? Well, what if we want to remove the leaf at some time? For example, leaves in, in fall make a lot of sense, but what about leaves in January? Well, they're all gone. What if in January we want to replace the leaves with snowflakes, right? So we could reuse the stand and put snowflakes on there, which means we need some way to combine you know, or to attach the leaf to the stand in a non-permanent way. And so there's some options around uh, that, but the thing that came to mind for me was Lego, right? You think of two Lego bricks and they, they snap together and they pull back apart and they're very snug when they're together, but they're, you can still pull them apart with a little bit of effort. So I thought, okay, well, why don't we model uh, the, the little Lego pegs on top here and then underneath in the leaf, we'll have the corresponding holes. Well, what I wanna do is I don't wanna, you know, I thought of it now and I don't wanna go back and model it on each one three times. But since we did that repeating pattern, I don't really have to. All I need to do is I'm going to um, go back a couple of steps in my timeline before I did the repeating pattern. All right, so I went back in time here and I'm going to model the pegs on top of this one. And then when we move the timeline forward, you'll see that each one of them is going to get uh, the, the same thing is copied to it. All right, so I'm gonna create a new sketch on top of this face and zoom in here. And I'm gonna make a couple construction lines to help me line up the pegs um, evenly. I'll just draw, because I want, I want four of them on this. Um, so what I want, I'll just draw these lines and I'm gonna draw them through trial and, you know, a little bit of trial and error. I found that if I dimension these, D for dimension, click here and here, and I, if I put them four millimeters away from the edge, uh, things are gonna line up uh, very nicely. So do the same for these vertical ones. Down here, four millimeters, D for dimension, click on the lines and type in four, hit enter. And now the, now the grid is very uniform. And I'm gonna press C for my circle tool. And I'm going to click in the centers. And I know that a, a five millimeter circle turns out pretty nicely. So I'm gonna say five millimeters for each of these. And so there, now we have four circles which we can make into pegs. All right, so I'm gonna finish that sketch. And you have to think back now, when we made our leaf, the first extrusion I did was two millimeters, right? And so the, the candle ends up sitting two millimeters on top of two millimeters of plastic. So if I want these pegs to go into the leaf and I go all the way to two millimeters, that's as far as I can go. I think I wanna leave a little bit of room and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extrude out these pegs um, only 1.5 millimeters, right? So if I do that 1.5, E to extrude 1.5, um, now I have four pegs, kind of looks like a Lego, right? And if I move my timeline back forward again, I didn't have to go and fix those other ones because we use the circle pattern Fusion 360 recalculated the work I'd done in the past and applied it to future operations, right? So it's very, very powerful to, to everything you can have Fusion 360 do for you. Uh, things like repeating patterns or um, dimensioning things uh, saves you a lot of time when you're modeling. So now I have my Legos and my stand component. I have my leaf, my leaf component how do I get them together? So there's another tool here called a joint. So there's this assemble menu and joint says pick, pick two components and you can join them together, right? So this is another reason why components are so important in Fusion 360. You can't join two bodies. I mean, you can, but that's the combined tool, but 
joints are a little bit different. In joints, it actually moves the components relative to one another uh, and sticks them together. So you can only do that for components. So I'm going to click joint and it's gonna to say to me, okay, well, which things do you wanna join? I need two components. So I'm going to go to the bottom of the leaf and click on the leaf. And it's gonna say, what's the second component? And uh, the maple leaf was actually the middle in my example. So I'm gonna use the middle post here. I hover over until, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, I hover over until I get that symbol right in the middle because I want the leaf to sit flat on this post and have the pegs dig into it a little bit. So I'm going to click and you can see that as soon as I do that, Fusion 360 has moved my leaf exactly on top of the post and uh, the pegs are kind of going into the leaf. It's not positioned perfectly so it's giving us these controls and say, hey, do you want to make any more changes before we finish this operation? And I think I do. I want it to be centered. And in order to um, see, uh, it's, I found it easiest to turn to wireframe mode, which is this menu down here, visual style wireframe. And now I can see through the leaf and I see, you know, I kind of want those, you know, this to be in the center more or less. So I'm going to drag that up. And I'm gonna drag this to the left, not quite that much. How about negative five? That looks pretty good. Except, oh, I didn't mean, I hit enter there and I shouldn't have yet. I want to turn the leaf as well so that the stem is kind of facing into the middle. So that this leaf is a little bit different orientation than some of the other ones, just for some visual interest. So I'm gonna turn it about 70 degrees, gets that stem right over the middle. Of, of my stand, I hit enter now, go back and I will turn this back to our normal mode and we can look at what we have. So now it's looking almost like our finished result, right? We have the stand, we have the leaf and everything's in the right spot. What we haven't done yet though, is actually put holes in the bottom of the leaf, right? So right now Robert, these two- Can you, are you able to take questions? Yeah, that was a good time. Okay, I was just waiting to see if there was a good time. We have a couple questions in the chat. Um, one, um, some folks wanted to know your background. Uh, are you an engineer? Is this part of your regular uh, work day job? Uh, uh, this is not part of my regular day job at all. No, um, my background is I'm a programmer. So this is for me just a hobby. Um, so please take everything you learned here today as I'm a hobbyist, I'm teaching you what I know, I don't do this on a daily basis. So there, there may be um, different techniques that you'll be, if you go into the field, that you'll look back on this workshop and say, what was he doing? And if you find those out, please email me at ngywitquestions and tell me exactly what I did wrong, because I'll appreciate it. Um, but if this kind of thing interests you, uh, you know, to go for a career, then you're definitely gonna have uh, a, a fun time. I know I am, this is just my hobby. Thank you. How, um, another question was, how did you get that circle? Um, so there's, uh, so I'm not sure which circle it refers to. There's, there's a circle on top of the leaf. Yeah, I think it's the and circle on top of the leaf. So let me go back to that real quick then. If I activate, I'm sorry, I actually did that when we were still in the main component. If I go back a ways in my timeline, we can see that circle. So here is the leaf um, prior to the circle and then we sketched on top of it. So I'm gonna open that sketch. I just drew a circle in the middle of the leaf, right? And then the next step was I extruded out based on that circle. I just went up like 15 millimeters. And so that circle, we made it specifically big enough to hold a T light. Does that answer the question? I think so. I think I think it does, Robert. One other question: um, How do you make the sketch a flat that that it's a flat sketch into a three D solid thing? So that that's um, something that takes a little bit of getting used to. I know it did for me. Uh, it, once you once you get used to how Fusion deals with things, basically you make a sketch. And then you use one of the tools it has. Uh, usually it'll be like an extrude. 
right? So anytime you have a sketch and there's a face in it, whether you made a circle, a uh, square, or if you made, when we originally made the, the leaf, we just drew a, a, a very squiggly line, right? Uh, as long as those that line all joins together, it's a, it can be a face. And then out of that face, you can use the extrude tool um, to make it 3D, right? So it goes from a flat 2D face and you extrude it out to a 3D object. And then you combine a series of sketches or and 3D objects together to make something much more complicated, right? We've been going for 40 minutes now and I went from, you know, maybe we drew five or six sketches total uh, and combine that with the other tools and we have a stand and a leaf and then the leaf has a, you know, holder for a candle light in it and everything, right? Um, so once you get that sort of fundamental thing about Fusion 360, that a sketch, you extrude into an object and combine several of those together and you get something much more complex. Uh, I find myself sometimes thinking, you know, I'm looking at the world around me, I say, oh, look, that's, a, that's really a square with another square on top of it that's extruded a little higher and then you bevel the side of it, right? So you, you kind of start thinking in those terms. It's, it's mostly about, you know, get in here, look at the tools you have, play with them, see what they do. And then maybe, you know, maybe you follow a tutorial or two, see what other people do. And you, you kind of start getting this uh, frame of mind that says, you know, oh, it, you know, things, things look complicated, but as long as I can break them down one step at a time into basic shapes on top of basic shapes, you, you get very complicated very quickly. And it's, it's frank, you know, frankly, it still amazes me how how easy it can be to model something like this. Thanks, Robert. I think that's it for, for a few minutes. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, we're, we're actually almost done. So, and we will take more questions at the end. One of the last things I wanna show is now that we have our stand and our leaf, and the leaf's just kind of sitting there and those pegs we modeled are kind of intersecting with the leaf, right? So if I, if I go to the side here and I use, so there's a inspect menu. And one of the things I find very useful in here is the section analysis. What this does is you click it, it says, okay, which face do you wanna have the analysis based off of? So you click here and you can see immediately it kind of cut away everything from, from one side of this plane to the other. And I can move where this plane is so I can see the inside of my model even as I'm modeling it. So I'm gonna put it right about there because what I wanna see, hit enter for okay. And what I wanna see is, hey, look, here's my arm, here's the pegs on the arm. And you can see they're, they're interfering with the leaf on top. That is the orange and the green lines are, you see this kind of cross hatch pattern. That's because they're, um, both bodies are, inside of each other, which we don't really want. We want um, the leaf to have holes and the arm to have the pegs. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn that analysis off for now, is use the combine tool, right? So combine, you can put together, you can combine two bodies in, you can either do it additively or subtractively, that is join or cut. And so what I wanna do is I want my target body to be the leaf and I want my tool body to be the arm. So the target body is the thing that you wanna perform the action on. And the tool is the other body that will help you perform that action. And the action I want in this case is cut, right? Cause I wanna cut some holes in my leaf and I wanna do it exactly where those pegs are. So that's why I chose the tool as the arm. And importantly, I don't, Sometimes you want the tool to go away. You might just draw a body that's meant to cut and then you want, you want the, just, just to be a hole and you don't want that other body there at all. But in this case, I want to keep the arm. All right, so I'm gonna cut into the leaf exactly where the pegs interfere, but I don't want the arm to go away. So I'm gonna keep tools checked. And once I click, okay, it's gonna perform the cut and nothing changed, right? Oh, what changed? Well, we can't really see anything from the outside, but that's expected. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide the stand. And if we look at the bottom of the leaf, we now have holes in it, exactly where that arm met the leaf, right? Uh, so that's good. If we go 
we turn this back on, we turn our analysis back on, and I zoom in, we can see that the orange piece, the arm, goes up into the leaf, but they don't interfere anymore. That is, the orange and the green never intersect. So, so good, job done, right? Close. Um, in a perfect world where you had machinery capable of uh, either 3D printing or maybe you're doing some, maybe you're doing out of metal or you're doing out of wood, if you're capable of making two pieces exactly fit together, then you'd be done. But we're not in a perfect world. And especially in 3D printing, you often need tolerances that are higher than you might, for example, if you were doing metalworking, right? Metal could be much more precise than plastic tends to be. So you have to build in something called tolerances. Excuse me a moment. Sorry, I need a drink of water. Uh, so you have to build in tolerances. And that is nothing but leaving a little bit of space in between two parts. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn this analysis back off. I'm gonna turn the stand visibility off. And I'm just gonna build in the tolerance to the leaf. That is, I want to make sure there's enough room for the pegs to go in the holes. And I'm gonna do that using the push, um, this push press pull tool. So if I click this, it says, okay, what faces do you wanna press or pull? And I wanna press these very top faces where the, the pegs are gonna go up a little bit so that they, they have enough room to go all the way into leaf and it can sit flat. And I've found uh, typically when you're 3D printing, if you want something to be kind of a loose fit and in the upwards direction, I want it to be loose, about a 0.2 millimeters is a good clearance. So I'm gonna go negative 0.2 to make them go up. And hopefully you saw them shift up just a little bit and I'm hit enter. And when you want something to be more or less a friction fit, um, a good rule of thumb is 0 0.05 millimeters. And I want the circles around the pegs to fit very snugly. And so I'm going to do the same thing for them. I'm gonna move them outward just a little bit. In this case, I'm at negative 0 0.05, right? And that's gonna move them out just enough to have those pegs uh, cleanly interface with the holes. They're, it's gonna fit but tight enough that um, I'll be able to kind of shake it around and nothing's gonna drop loose unless I kind of you know, pull on it a little bit, right? So now that I have that, let's go back and turn our stand back on, turn our analysis back on. If we zoom way in, we can see there is some space, there's a gap here at the top. We zoom in even a little bit more, there's a tiny gap around the peg. And that's gonna be enough that when we print it out um, that the pegs will be able to go in the holes. And something to note, it, this, these values, these tolerances will depend on your particular 3D printer. Um, if you have one that's, that you either don't have dialed in very accurately or just isn't, or you're using a filament that maybe you know, oozes a little more than other filament, you might have to adjust those to be um, slightly more tolerant. And so you just go in there and you adjust your values for the press pool uh, until it fits, right? And whenever you're doing something like this, you know, I uh, when I was when I was testing for this for this class, I didn't want to, you know, print the entire stand, the entire leaf every time. That's a waste of plastic, waste of my time. What you probably want to do is just make a little tiny test part, right? So I would I would make just a square with some pegs in it. And I would make just a square with some holes in it, right? And, that, and nothing else, right? And then I would print that out. It would take me five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever, print it out, see if it fits together. I don't know, you know, it's a little too loose, it's a little too tight. Uh, let me adjust and go again. And then once I've got that dialed in just right, I would go and apply that tolerance to the full model. So I know when I print it out, the model's gonna stick together and I didn't waste a bunch of plastic in time. Um, but that's basically it. Now, obviously I didn't draw the other two leaves. Um, I will leave that as an exercise to you. You can, uh, basically what you would end up doing is you would turn the canvas back on, create a new component. We'll call, you know, uh, 
if you were to do the, the white oak leaf, I might turn off the stand and maple leaf to get out of my way, create a new sketch on the ground plane here. And then I would just uh, draw another line outlining the white, the white oak leaf, uh, make the circle in the center, and then um, yeah, extrude the leaf, make the circle in the center, extrude the circle, and then make a joint and put the bottom of that leaf on whatever uh, part of the stand I wanted uh, to put that particular leaf on. And I repeat the same with the third. Uh, I won't do that today. I want to take a couple more questions before we run out of time. Um, but I, you know, hopefully this gave you a, a, a good overview of what you can do with Fusion 360, what you can do with 3D modeling, um, is, uh, thinking about 3D printing. Oh, before, before I uh, turn it over to questions, there was one piece of, uh, one other tool I wanted to show you that I had in my final drawing, and that was the stand as a square looks okay, um, but a lot of things in real life have bevels and have curves that make them look a little bit aesthetically better. Um, and so I, in my, in my final design, I put what's called a chamfer, that is a, a bevel on, on an edge onto the stand. So I'm gonna choose the chamfer tool. I'm going to click each of the top edges. And then I'm just gonna pull this arrow down uh, not too well. It goes down in increments of 10 millimeters. And my my I remember my stand was only five millimeters tall, so I'm just going to type five instead. You can see it kind of chamfers it down, and uh, I like that better, better personally. Um, so a combination of uh, tools, the the sketches, the extruding, uh, chamfering, um, and combining and splitting bodies can uh, you know over the course of an hour once you get practice at it, uh, make something very complex in a very simple way. So I know there's some questions in the chat and we have just a few minutes left. I wanna start taking those. Robert, I think, Aunt Samory, we I think we've captured the questions that I see. If there's one that I missed, please feel free to chat it um, again. Yep, if there are no questions, I'll, I'll go ahead and create that, that other leaf while we're waiting. Please feel free to interrupt me. I'm just, this is um, exactly the same operation we did before. Are there any questions in general, even things I didn't go over today, you know, uh, other, other 3D modeling things that you've uh, seen in the past that you were curious about? There's a question about how I made the candle holder part. So by candle holder, um, do we mean the, the circle in the middle of the leaf or do we mean the, the stand? Can you clarify? There's another question. Uh, how did I start 3D printing? Um, I didn't have any experience before I started. What I, what I did um, was I was, I've been interested in it for at least a year. And then I didn't get my first 3D printer until April of this year. Um, it, I, after the, the pandemic started, I said, you know what? I need a hobby while I'm at home. Um, I'm gonna buy a 3D printer. And so I had been watching a lot of videos on YouTube up until that point. I watched people like Angus of uh, Maker's Muse or uh, Joel, the 3D printing nerd. Um, uh, some others that I'm, I'm not remembering at the moment, but there's a lot of people on YouTube who do a lot of great content. And I learned a lot from them before I went out and decided to buy a printer and start doing things on my own. So how did I um, take this drawing and turn it into a 3D print? Uh, so let's go over that. Um, after you've actually made your model, you need to export the parts of it that you want to print 
uh, as files that your slicing software can use. So for example, the leaf, if I right click on the component here, save as STL is the option I wanna pick. Uh, 3D software often deals with STLs or OBJ files, and they're just files that describe all of the faces and curves of a, a particular model. And so if I save as STL, uh, I just get this box. Uh, I don't, don't worry too much about these options. I never have to change them. I just click OK. And it'll say, OK, well, where do you want to save it? Uh, so I'm just called mapleleaf.stl and save it. I already saved it earlier, so I'll replace it. And then it just exports it. And once you take, you'll, you'll take that STL file. And I'm not going to go over this today, but you put it in whatever your 3D printer software is, and it will prepare it to be printed. In fact, the uh, white oak leaf is the, the print you see going in the video right now. So I think um, you know, for, for reference sake, uh, the print uh, of that white oak leaf at the settings I used it at takes about an hour and a half. I think printing all three leaves plus the stand was about nine hours. But that's mostly you know, printing time. Uh, it, you know, it maybe it took me the first time, maybe you know, an hour or two to model everything that way I wanted it, and you know, uh, a a little bit of time to make sure the printer was set up, it had the right filaments in it. In my final one, I used, uh, I did, I made it a multicolor sort of thing. So I, I, you know, I picked you know a green for the base, and then about partway through, I told my printer to stop, and I want to make the 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 candle holder part out of a different color. So I just swapped colors, give it some visual interest that way. I just, somebody commented, hey, you just threw a whole lot of stuff at us an hour and I just said the word simple. Okay, um, I, maybe I'm fudging that, that word a little bit. Um, in the world of, of 3D modeling, what I have demonstrated for you today is relatively simple. Um, although if you're just getting started, I don't expect that you can do everything I just did in the same amount of time, right? I have been doing this for a couple months now. I have watched people do a lot of this. Um, it's, it's not, you know, it takes a little bit of getting used to, it takes practice, um, but I, you know, if you're interested in this and you, you download the software and, and just kind of um, go based off of what you've seen today, I believe you can get this uh, in not too much time. One thing I'll mention is that I will make available all of the files um, that we've done today. I'm going to put them up in a GitHub repository, and I'll, uh, I've already linked that repository from the web page, although there's nothing there yet. I'm going to put the files that we created here today up there, and you can download those and play with those as a basis for um, for, for getting it done yourself as well. Uh, the, so I mentioned the 3D printing time of this. So, you know, th this whole thing stands, you know, um, maybe like 10 inches tall or so, and, you know, 10 inches around once you put all the leaves on. And I said it took maybe nine hours total. 3D printing can be uh, slow. If you think about it that way, really, wow, it takes hours and hours to print. It does. Um, but if you kind of consider that the things you make are completely custom to what you want uh, and compare it to the time it takes to maybe go out to the store, if you can even do that these days, or get it shipped to you, which might take days, it can be uh, very quick. Another thing that that really that nine hours is nothing is if consider the time it takes to 3D print something versus the time it would take to, and the cost to send it away to some company, say, I want an injection mold for, for this part, or I want you to, to manufacture this out of metal or wood or whatever, and you know the cost and time that that would take. So that's where the 3D printing really comes in its own. It's, it's affordable for me to make this one-off thing where if I didn't have a 3D printer, I couldn't do it at all.
not not a solo operation, especially not for so little money. We're almost out of time. Are there any more questions before we go? If not, I really hope you've enjoyed it. The recording will be available and you'll be able to watch this back and, and follow it along if you like. Like I said, I'll make all the files available. If you have any questions, please email ng-ywit-questions at netapp.com and I will try to answer them there as well. I really appreciate your time today. Thanks everyone.